All right, guys, today I want to talk to you about three things you can do to dramatically improve the performance and power of your Ford based V10 motorhome. I have a 2003 Class C V450 with a V10, like it's so common out on the road. And when I first got it, I was really disappointed in the performance and the power that, that it had. Um, I read a lot online about different um, mods that could be done and I've done a number of those and I'll tell you there's three that really stand out. You can waste your money doing a whole lot of different um, mods and upgrades but really there's three that I think are by far and away best money spent. So first I want to take you inside and show you uh, the, the best mod, what I think is the best bang for the buck that, that you can possibly do. So here's the five star tuner uh, right here. I chose the SCT um, flash module and I've already applied the tune. The tune that I got was the 87 octane RV tune. And um, all you have to do is go in here to program the vehicle and, and you just walk through the screens. I've already done that, so I'm not gonna apply it again. Uh, you will have to provide five star tuning with some vehicle information and they'll build the tune specifically to your motor home. But even after you've done the tune and the tune really improves your transmission shift points. I'd say that's the biggest value in that tune. It makes firm, quick shifts, um, and the engine, uh, the performance and power of the engine is improved, but really it's in that transmission shifts where before it was constantly hunting, shifting, any sort of throttle you applied, um, it would be downshifting, upshifting, it's way better. But the other huge advantage is, you can look at the gauges you get from the factory. I mean, these suck. I have no transmission information. They're so basic. Engine temperature, sort of, um, on some vague scale. I don't know anything about, I have no tachometer, uh, load, anything like that. So once you've installed this, um, it keeps going to sleep on me because I don't have the gauges up. You can program from a ton of different possible gauge options and it will display to you in whatever layout you want with whatever information you want all the time while you're driving. So rather than this worthless little gauge set up here, um, it's gonna load up and I'll show you what, what I did. Like I say, you can tune, you can program this to be whatever layout and whatever information you want. So I chose to have the engine load. You can see I'm at idle right now. As I rev up the engine, you know, apply throttle, not rev it up, but as I apply throttle, you'll see that they're, you know, it's spiking up. I've got RPMs now, so I've got a tachometer to know exactly where I am. Um, in that in that power band and and when i'm you know need to shift because i can manually with the overdrive button um shift in and out of overdrive i've got the vehicle speed there in a digital format i chose transmission temperature uh very important as as you're pulling those steep grades uh that you've got an eye on on your trans temp uh coolant temperature down to the actual degree rather than the vague indicator up there and then I chose the outside air temperature the intake air temp being roughly what the outside air temperature is as long as you're driving that thing will really get high if you're sitting there parked and idling it'll be far above the ambient temperature but usually it runs about two degrees above so as I mentioned a cold air intake waste your money on it but um, the, the air intake temperature is almost the same as the outdoor air. So you're not gaining much with, with the fancy cold air intake because um, as I watch this going down the road, the ambient temperature is usually about two degrees cooler than what this is reading as the intake air temperature. So uh, that air is not heating up much, but you can see the temperatures are starting to climb as, as I uh, idle the engine here for a minute. This is just super helpful, always on. And then when I shut off the vehicle, you know, it, it turns off and, and goes away, but I leave that up all the time. And uh, it's such an improvement over these gauges that you get from the factory. So wanted to show you that in person. All right, guys, so the five-star tuning module, by far uh, your best bang for the buck as far as mods to increase your performance. Now, the next one I wanna talk about is really expensive, um, but it also makes a huge difference in, in the performance. So these come with a Dana 70 in the rear end, rear axle, with 456 gears. Those gears are way too tall. You know, you can cruise 75 miles an hour down, down the interstate with those gears at a, at a comfortable RPM uh, for the engine, but you're typically not gonna be driving your motor home 75, 80 miles an hour. If you're like me, you're more in that 60, 65, um, 
range and the engine is just lugging at that you know the rpms are far too low um, and i'll show you a, a graph of what the rpms are with the gear change that i'm going to talk to you about and and you'll see how you're just right in the sweet zone so so this engine makes about 420 pound feet of torque at 3200 rpm so if you're anywhere below 3200 rpm you're not making your peak torque obviously 3200 is pretty high rpm to constantly be driving out so you want to be a little bit under that but when when you get these from the factory if you're going 65 miles an hour um, on the interstate you're down in the low 2000 rpm range and it's just not making any power this is a small v10 and so it likes to rev. These engines make good power, they run real smooth, they last forever, but you've gotta get the RPMs up in order to make that power. And so the way to do that is to change out the gears. Like I said, these come with 456 gears in the rear end. Those are way too high. So I dropped mine down, I ran a number of calculations on whether I wanted to go to 488s or 513s. At the end of the day, I chose to go to 513s. I'm really glad I did. Um, it's absolutely perfect. And so now when I'm driving at 65 miles an hour, I'm right in the meat of the torque. I've got great power. Um, I don't need to be going 75, 80. And you know, your fuel mileage is terrible no matter what. I mean, you are not gonna be getting, um, that, that's often a concern with getting too low of gears, but it's just not affected. You know, I changed it over, maybe a half mile, uh, half gallon per mile difference. So like I say, I average about seven, to eight um, depending on the terrain sometimes as low as six if I'm really driving through the mountains but but generally seven to eight um, and, and it just doesn't have much effect so that was about a three thousand dollar change to, to swap out the gears I also did the brakes at the same time um, and I had a shop do all of that rather than do it myself so that's kind of a worst case scenario about three thousand dollars to get a complete gear swap from a 456 to a 513 in the rear end night and day difference uh, it takes off a lot quicker uh, it holds its gears a lot better and it just performs uh, far better now once you do that your speedometer is going to be off it's another advantage that five star tuning so because I've got the tune in there I just called up five star and said hey I made a gear change from this to this they sent me a new tune for it and now the speedometer is correct so you're not going to be dealing with uh, with your speedometer being off if you have that tuner that you can uh, modify the programming now the third uh, mod that I want to talk about not even a mod but just something important for getting good power out of these engines it's gonna seem really basic I debated even including this but a lot of people don't think behind why this is the case and so you don't realize the importance of it that is changing your air filter really often on these things so if you think about your average car getting 21 miles to the gallon and this thing getting seven, it's consuming three times the amount of air and fuel over the same number of miles that your average passenger car is, is consuming. So these things drink a ton of air and the air filter really isn't that big. I mean, it's not tiny, but it's not that big. And so I change mine out every 5,000 miles. I'll show you why. So I just, this has 2,000 miles. I got 2,000 miles on this air filter and I'll show you what it looks like. So just pulling it out, I got butterflies falling out all over the place. And just take a look at how much garbage and, uh, and insects and debris are in that filter. This is 2,000 miles. Um, so I recommend every 5,000 miles, change out your filter. You don't, the K&N, I tried it. Um, you know, you do cold air intake and all that, you're wasting your money. Just change out your air filter uh, more often to keep that air flowing freely. So those are the three mods that I recommend everyone does to their Class C uh, with a Ford V10, and I think you'll be really happy with the performance and, uh, and the power that you get out of doing those three things. Now I've got another video where I'm gonna walk you guys through the top steps for getting these things to handle. As you probably know, these are pretty white knuckle, horrible to drive um, because the handling is, is so bad. And I have done every mod under the sun to improve that and I can tell you the best mods to do where you're gonna get the most money most bang for your buck uh, on the performance on the handling side of it to where my wife will drive this now you know one hand one finger down the interstate tracks tracks well semis passing it just drives phenomenal so 
catch my next video and I'll talk to you guys about what to do on the uh, handling side.